Welcome, and thank you for coming out this afternoon. I am Alyssa Gwinnell, and I'm the Assistant Dean for the School of Education and Professional Studies. And I have the distinct pleasure of introducing today's University Hour presenter. I am, however, almost positive that most of you sitting in this room already know Bruce John, perhaps then leaving my role completely unnecessary. <clears throat> It does not surprise me that he is no stranger to those of you sitting in the audience today. And in fact, it only emphasizes the impact that Bruce has had on all of you, the local organizations, and the community throughout the years. Whether it has been through his music, his philanthropy, his fundraising and donations, or his friendship, his impact has been felt far and wide. A little over 10 years ago, I stumbled upon Bruce John playing at a local restaurant in Coventry while I was at a holiday party with staff. I couldn't have planned it free entertainment like that any better if I had tried. Having heard of him, but never having met him, when Bruce took a break, I introduced myself and had a quick chat about music. Bruce, I think that was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> Since that time, we have shared stories of common friendships, experiences, music, and philosophies. And why wouldn't we have these connections? We obviously grew up at the same time. The web that is woven with these common threads strive to remind us of the importance of our connections with people. It is through these connections that are formed, friendships that are made, and the work that is accomplished that defines us as a community. Bruce John knew this and brought people together everywhere he went, gathering people from different walks of life and creating community without leaving Eastern Connecticut. It is fun to reminisce and find these commonalities, but when those shared experiences lead to a man such as Bruce John, who has found his way through entertainment, adversity, love, empathy, and compassion to make a difference in the neighborhood that he and his family has called home for multiple generations, you can't help but to believe that it was more than fate that led us all here today. In 2009, Bruce and his wife, Teresa, started the Bread Box Theater here in Willimantic, which its mission is to benefit the Coventry Kitchen. In 2022, Bruce was voted the runner-up for best solo musician in the Connecticut Magazine Reader's Poll. <clears throat> and this year marked the fifth year running to be awarded the Chronicle Reader's Choice Entertain Entertainer of the Year Award. <clears throat> so without further ado, on behalf of the University Hour Committee, the Business Administration Department, the Center for Community Engagement, the Community Film and Theater Department, there's lots of us, the Rugby Clubs, the Education Department, and the deans, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Bruce John, accompanied by Peggy Ann, as he brings you on an over six decade journey of his, of his experiences in Willimantic through songs and stories. Thank you. Melissa, appreciate it. So I, I just really thank you all so much for coming out. I, I have a story to tell. <coughs> It's my story, but it's also Eastern Connecticut's story, Willimantic, Mansfield, Coventry area. He, um, and today helping me is going to be my sidekick, uh, Peggy Ann Contos Harvey. And uh, she, yeah, she, she love you. her. And we're going to start, I'm going to start early just telling you my story with, with music. I lived next door to my father's restaurant, Lou's Drive in Eagleville. And on the other side of the parking lot was my Nana's house, my mom's mother. And I spent a lot of time at her house, and she had a player piano, so we had a lot of music going on. We listened to Mitch Miller and Liberace and, uh, and all, all those TV shows, Lawrence Welk. And then in my dad's restaurant, we had a jukebox. And the cool part of the jukebox was, when the records kind of went off the charts, they would give them to my family. My older brother and sister would play them on the, on the hi-fi, the, the record player. So I was exposed to a lot of music early. And uh, today I'm gonna start 
in Willimantic. And I, I want you to think back to the, it was 1958 in January, there was a song number one on the charts in the country by a band called Danny and the Juniors. It was called At The Hop. And uh, that summer, I think around June, my mother and father said, get in the car. <laughs> so we drove to Willimantic from, from beautiful downtown Eagleville and we went to the armory across the river. And at that time, oh, come on now. At that time, the army had, they, they had just be, before they'd done it into apartments, they had these big double doors where the tanks would drive in and out and stuff. And these doors were wide open and there was this band on stage and I was um, seven, my brother was 15, we were there to pick him up. And there in front of my eyes was Danny and the Juniors. I knew what At The Hop was. I mean, I, I listened to it on the radio and had brothers and sisters. So right here at Willimantic, in those days they used to come here in a station wagon and set up and play. So my eyes got real big and my ears got even bigger. And I listened to Danny and the Juniors do the number one song in the country in Willimantic. listen to the jukebox more and more after that and I remember it's going to take you through a little uh, Americana music history in that same year there was a band called um, the Dell Vikings they were a group of Air uh, Navy uh, recruits down in Pennsylvania and they, it was the first integrated uh, doo-wop music and uh, they had this incredibly big big hit you couldn't go anywhere without hearing it. Come and go with me. 
Jesus, I really need you. Please say you'll never leave me. Please say you never, yeah, say you never. You'll never give me a chance. Ah! Fifties, Peggy, yeah, come on. Yes, I need you. Yes, I really need you. Please say you'll never leave me. Oh, please say you never. Yeah, you say you never. Never give me a chance. Come, 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 come. Come into my heart and tell me, darling, that we will never part. I need you. Come and go with me. Sing a little do walk with me. Come on. So fast forward a little bit to 1960, I was nine years old. My mother and my third grade teacher, Margie Severson, dear woman, still alive, they decided that I would be a good Elvis impersonator because I was always running around the house with a plastic guitar impersonating Elvis. I had seen him on Ed Sullivan in 1956 and I couldn't get him out of my head. I just loved Elvis, actually I still do. So. They said, there was a big variety show at Vinton Grammar School in Mansfield. In those days, these variety shows were big deals in town. And uh, there was a couple hundred people there in the, in the afternoon for the show and a couple hundred at night. And I remember they let my sideburns grow. They made me a satin shirt and pants, blue suede shoes, got the guitar, and I lip synced. I actually lip synced um, blue suede shoes. So, <laughs> I started out as an Elvis impersonator. That, that's really my, really my big start in show business. And the only thing I remember is at the end of it, Peggy, I remember all the crowd kind of going crazy with this goofy little kid up there shaking his hips and running around. I said, I like this. <laughs> and here I am, 60 whatever years later. I said, it won't go to money, the beautiful show. Really get ready now, go, cat, go, and don't you? You can't do the thing they offer my blue sweet shoe. You knock me down, you can step on my face, slamming my name all over the place. Doing the thing that you wanna do. Pump my heart and lay off the night shoes and don't you step on my blue sweet shoe. You can't do the thing they offer my blue sweet shoe. Rock it up again. I've been, um, I've had the blessing of being well-versed in different genres of music. I, I love lots of genres. I love all good music, actually, any genre, from any country. I love it all. But uh, 
when I was um, 11, I learned how to play the guitar. And um, I was down in Jay Ames's kitchen it was a college football third string player who used to give me guitar lessons instead of, uh, so he'd give free grinders at my dad's restaurant. That's where I started, Jay, in your, in your kitchen. So, um, the folk music hit me heavy right, right away. And um, my, my neighbor and I, Mike Beatty, he's about a year and a half older than me, we, we decided we were gonna be a folk duo. So we'd practice every day. We'd either be in his room or we'd be in a little stone building on the corner of 275 and 32. We'd practice in there a lot, good acoustics. Anyway, we joined a, a hoot dandy right here in Willimantic. It was the June of 1962. My friend Carl Tonello, who's still, uh, still around here, he's over at the card home, he started a hoot nanny when he got out of high school. There was a thousand people at Gow Field. Folk music was on fire. Do you remember this? 1962. And uh, so we got up on stage, and when they say that your knees knock together when you're nervous, they actually really do. <laughs> I remember that, my knees banging together. And there was a band out of, uh, out of Middletown. There were some Wesleyan students who had formed a folk group. And they had the number one song in the country. And it was Michael Road to Boga Shore. So let's hoot Nanny up and sing with me, okay? first years of music. I got my first album that was mine, not my brothers and sisters, and it was a freewheeling Bob Dylan. It did several things for me. It, it taught me some amazing songs. And secondly, it started to ignite some social consciousness in me. So in that first year, I remember um, I learned this song, uh, Blowing in the Wind, and it was the consummate folk song. It kind of addressed all the social ills of the time. And um, and sadly, I have to say that throughout the years, I always thought that through all the different revolutionary thinking and all the, the liberal stuff that was done, that we would not be, have to sing that song anymore. But damn, you gotta sing it more now than ever. And I'll sing it till the day I die if I need to. But um, just gotta open people's eyes. And, I, and it opened my eyes at the time. I'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, we're gonna do a little Bob Dylan for you. In a hoot nanny fashion, if you would sing along on the chorus, I'd really appreciate it. How many roads must a man walk down before they call him a man? How many seas must a white dove sail before she sleeps? 
sleeps in the sand. Yes, and how many times must a cannonball fly before the forever band? Say with me. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. How many years can a mountain exist? Before it is washed to the sea How many years can some people exist Before they're allowed to be free Yes, and how many times can a man turn his head Pretend that he just doesn't see Only oh, answer, my friend it's a blowing in the wind. The answer blowing in the wind. Come on, So I just want to, I don't want to miss anything that I, I've been working on this for weeks. <laughs> At that time, the early 60s, it was really a revolutionary time. It was, um, the, the Vietnam War was ramping up and, 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 and some of the, the opposition and the, the, the ecology was just starting to be talked about. There was a lot of things going on and civil rights was at the top of the list. And, um, I remember being in eighth grade, uh, 1964, at E.O. Smith, and I had been a member of the Human Rights Commission of Little Manic. One of my teachers used to drive me down there. And we had gotten, um, me and another young fellow, a, 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 a Latino man, uh, Eno Rios from Little Manic, had gotten interpreters into the hospital and the police station, Spanish interpreters, this was a long time ago, and they didn't have them. Um, that was our that was our biggest accomplishment. And then that 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 spring, I started a civil rights group at E.O. Smith in eighth grade. It was called the Young Citizens of Equal Rights, E. Wiser, Y. C. E. R. And we had a hundred members, and we used to meet at the um, we used to meet over at the Congregational Church and stores, and we would uh, sing "We Shall Overcome." We did big sales and car washes and donated $82 to the SCLC, Martin Luther King's organization. Got a beautiful letter. But that's what was going on in my brain and going on, and using music always to have that kind of impact. I was in a band back then called Brian and the Countdowns. Brian's still with us. He, I, I played his wedding probably 20 years ago. But Brian, um, we played at a battle of the bands in Willimantic here, a place called The Durable, with Rosie the Bug as the judge, big DJ out of Norwich. 
Ended up owning a big strip club for 20 years. But anyway, what a world, huh? Uh, and then the, the, our first band job we got paid for was at Pollock's Amusement Park, which I thought was an odd place. It was a, this big old factory carved up into different rooms, mostly for fraternity parties. It turned out later to be a place called the Shabu. <laughs> so my first beer gig was actually in there. I think I made five bucks. And uh, I moved on, and when I got to be a freshman in high school, um, I had a band invite me to be their singer and their player, the guitar player. And it was called The Gas Company. It doesn't sound the same without the flame. It's great. <laughs> and they had just come off a really big gig. Back then, it was hard to get paying gigs. They had played here at the, at the temple in town at a thing called the Synagogo. I thought, wow, that's... <laughs> and they, <clears throat> I played there last week for a David Foster event. But anyway, I thought, this got to be a great band. They, got, they played the Synagogo, you know? But in those days, it was, um, we did very well. We had a good band. And um, part of it was our appeal at UConn. We did a lot of British invasion stuff. I just see the face you got? Yes. All right. And we did British invasion. And a lot of bands weren't doing that, so we would, you'll love this. On Friday afternoons, they had a thing called the Hawk Dance, where college kids would hook up from like, I don't know, four to six or three to five over to the student union. We didn't drive. We would bring our wagons with amplifiers and guitars and drums over through West Campus and get to the student union and play. And we'd do our Beatles and our Stones and our British Invasion, and they loved it. We also got some great uh, frat parties out of it. <laughs> 14, 15 year old kids at frat parties drinking beer and letting the, the, the frat guys sing the dirty verses to what I say, you know? <laughs> what an upbringing I've had, it's so wholesome. So here's one of the early Beatles songs. Really hard to pick a Beatles song, my God. I just seen her face, I can't forget the time and place So we just met, she's just the girl for me I want all the world to see we've met But as it is, I'll dream of her tonight. this light and sunshine goofiness thing. <laughs> it's amazing how, how uh, uh, cathartic it really was for everybody. So to continue on, I have only one rule that I've ever really lived by in my life, and that is, if I sing you a Beatles song, I gotta sing you a Rolling Stones song to keep the cosmic and the karmic balance across the pond, at the, you know, the right thing. So here's an old Rolling Stones song for you. All night long, she made me cry. 
though she done me wrong. She hurt my eyes open. There's no lie. Tables turn. I was hurting to cry. And I used to love her. But it's all over now. used to run around all over town. She spent all my money down at Blondie's bar. She put me out, it was a pity how I cried. Tables turned, I was hurting to cry. And I used to love her. Get my breakfast in bed. You know, when I wasn't worried, she'd eat my aching head. But now she's here and there. Whenever a man in town, she's still trying to take me for that same old clown. And I used to love her, but it's all over now. Rolling Stones, the Beatles, the balance of the truck. Thank you. It was a great time around here. Everybody was in the band. Um, my, my future partners, uh, David Foster, his brothers Mike and Mark, Mark and Michael, had a great band, great controversy. And then we had bands, everybody had bands, and we used to play at the YMCA here in town. Everybody would go from the different bands would go, and they'd be watching your hands to see which chords you were playing, if you were the right or not. It was very critical, but it was beautiful. Um, so my band, The Gas Company, we tried to keep up with the hits. And uh, I'm thinking this is sometime around 65, 66. It was Simon and Garfunkel's biggest hit. Um, do we have um, B minor or you have A minor? If you did B or B flat, would that work or not? Whatever you want, Bruce. <laughs> I'd like to do, um, I'd like to do B, if that's okay. Okay. So this was a, Simon and Garfunkel's first big hit, and a beautiful piece of poetry. And my band used to do this, and um, all the other bands were envious. I'll tell you that right now. Wrong way. Here we go. Let's try that again. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Cause the vision softly creeping. Sees while I was sleeping, and the vision that was planted in my brain still remains within the sound of silence. The restless dreams I walked alone, the narrow streets of cobblestone. to the cold and damp When my eyes were stabbed by the flash of the neon light to split the night and touch the sound of silence And in the naked light of song to 
10,000 people, maybe more. People talking without speaking. People hearing without listening. People writing songs that voices never share. No, no one dares disturb the sounds of silence. Said I, you do not know. Silence like a cancer grows. Hear my words that I might teach you. Take my arms that I might reach you. But my world, like silent raindrops fell. Echoed in the well. Flashed out its warning and the words that it was for me, and the signs that the words of the prophets are written on the subway walls in tenement halls, whisper in the sound of silence. Of poetry and music. It was a golden era, obviously, you all know that in those years, from the 60s through the 70s, and we were all, a, a lot of us here, fortunate to be around. Um, so I morphed into other bands as high school progressed. The gas company was pretty big. We played a lot, played a lot of the parties, and the, um, we played a lot of. Um, the school dances, we did a lot of that stuff. Played in my house. And then we moved, yeah, we did play in your house. You played in the backyard and the Yukon security came because we were too loud. <laughs> your parents never stopped talking about that. <laughs> oh, God, it was great. Maple, Maple Road, man, we rocked it out. <clears throat> so as I got into a band, closer to the end of my high school, it was called the Nostalgic Tuba. And, uh, Remember the strawberry alarm clock and all those things? We thought it was pretty clever. And we were the house band that raised roller rink. We had a really big agent, the same one that managed the wild weed. So we would do double shows with them and we would follow their schedule uh, to Vermont and downstate and stuff. It was quite a top 40 band. Keep G, right? When you count, what? G? Keep G? To get together? Bruce just threw me a curveball. Oh, yeah. No, you called me up and told me you wanted to do this. <laughs> Let's try it. And uh, can we do it in whatever, whatever key happens to it? Well, you want, um, we can do it. Whatever you want. No, F. I thought it was a different F, all right? Yes, sir. So we're going to uh, do a song of peace and love. And I remember the band, there was, UConn was on strike one of those years. We went over there to the student union and just set up and played. And this is one of the songs we played, of Peace and Love. That's the year they painted the ROTC building and took over Gully Hall at UConn. <laughs> you were there, huh? But it was a beautiful song of uh, Peace and Love by the Jesse Collin and the Youngbloods. Well, I got to see it in the Jorgensen ones. Some may come and some may go, but 
we will surely find And when the one who left us here Returns for us at last We are but a moment's sunlight Just fading in the grass talk about this much, but uh, it's kind of difficult being in the band all the time. You never got to dance with your girlfriend, you know? Here's your girlfriend out there on the dance floor, you know, dance with all kinds of guys. <laughs> Everybody danced back then. I remember this is one of our big hits, one of the big slow songs that Ray's Roller Rink. <laughs> Ray's Roller Rink was a big, big place for teens. I mean, we used to get 300, 350 kids on a Saturday night in the summer. <clears throat> I was born in 19, and they were all 13, 14, 15, and uh, we were kind of like uh, rock stars at Coventry <laughs> for about 300 yards around us. Anyway, <clears throat> we're going to go across the pond, the big pond. You ready to go across the big pond? Yeah. One, the BGs. One, two, three. Days of light, a certain kind of light that never shine on me, and I want my love to be live with you, live with you. There's a way everybody say to do it. Somebody to love somebody. 
through all that I've been doing here preparing for this day is that I love every song I sing from I'm a little teapot to the, <laughs> the wheels on the bus right to the uh, to love somebody I love every song I sing because that's why I enjoy doing what I do um, I'm gonna move move ahead a little bit and there I was my second year in college as a freshman <laughs> at Eastern Connecticut State University when all hell broke loose, that's right. My brother and I and these two foster brothers bought the old factory over in Conaville. We opened the Shabu Inn. And um, it was open on October 22nd, 1971. I was doing pretty good in school too. I, I actually, I finally grasped that if you read the assignments and <laughs> went to class, you could actually get B's and A's. So anyway, something that it took me a long time to learn, but I had to drop out of school. We opened the Shabu. It was the biggest thing in the whole wide world. It was bigger than me and bigger than you. And we, um, what do you got there? You got a saxophone? I do, yeah. Probably really yeah, let's do that. No, let's do, um, let's do BB King. Here's the harmonica. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I, want, I, just, I just want to read you. I couldn't think of all the Shabu was the biggest nightclub in New England. Held a thousand people. I lived upstairs for nine years. I'm straight and sober for 35 of them <laughs> since then. But um, we, um, I can't list all the bands that played you, but I want to give you just a sample. Because I think it'll blow your mind. Um, we had BB um, King, Muddy Waters, Buddy Guy, Bonnie Ray, The Cars, Cheap Trick, Dire Streets. <laughs> it goes on and on and on. Jimmy Buffett. Uh, it, it just, John Sebastian, all my children, Eric Bird and the animals, and I could go on and on and on and on and on, but I won't. But I want to just tell you a couple of real quick Shibu stories. As a young man from Eagleville, living on the Willimantic border, I got to meet almost every great star in the world. And um, I got to be friends with Muddy Waters. And uh, Muddy Waters used to come up to my apartment upstairs and we'd do all kinds of illicit things and drink Piper Heisek champagne. And uh, one day he says, we got to be pretty close. I used to drive him around on my Porsche, uh, first gear. And we, we, we're talking one day and he goes, Bruce, he goes, I heard you got B.B. King coming. I went, yes, we do. I mean, Lefty and I are really excited. We love B.B. King. Not that we don't love you, Muddy, of course. He goes, Bruce, you're gonna think he's a phony. I said, what do you mean? He goes, he said, just his eyes got real big and he went, He's syrupy sweet. <laughs> and he's really like that with Muddy Waters, my best Muddy Waters. So he said that he was, a, he was not 40. The muddy, the B, muddy said that BB 
was the most humble, kindest, sweet man in the world. And fast forward a couple of months, we got B.B. King to play. And at the end of the show, I was just, I was in nirvana. I was in heaven. It was beautiful. Him and I are out. We're going upstairs to pay him. And he takes my hand. I said, listen, thank you so much for playing. He goes, oh, no. Thank you for having me. I said, well, you think you'd come back someday? He goes, would you have me? <laughs> he was so, and he was really like that when he said that. So we're going to do a, a, a small sampling of some shibu music. The blues was obviously... Um, we brought the blues to Eastern Connecticut, Shabu did. And many out there and thousands and thousands upon others never knew what the blues were until we brought them all in. Hound Dog Taylor and the Willie Dixon and um, on and on and on. I, don't, I can't just keep name dropping all day. But um, how about, how, uh, I always think it. Uh, this is a BB King song from Live at the Regal, one of my favorites. How blue can you get? Play them blues, Peggy. I've been down hearted, baby. Ever since the day we met. I've been down hearted, baby. Ever since the day we met. Now your love give me nothing but the blues. Hey baby, how blue can you get? You're evil when I'm with you, baby. And you're jealous when we're apart. You're so evil when I'm with you, baby. Jealous when we're apart. Now, how blue can you get? Yeah, the answer's right here in my heart. Hear me now, what I gotta say. I bought you a brand new Ford. You said, I want a Cadillac. I took you out to a ten dollar dinner. She said, thanks for the snack. I let you live up in my penthouse. You called it a shack. I gave you seven children. Now you want to give them back. Yeah, I've been down on the beach. Yeah, ever since the day we met. Your love give me nothing but the blues. Hey, baby, how blue can you get? Can you make these people blue, Peggy? Come on. Blow that horn. Shabu did for Eastern Connecticut was educate. Here we're here in an educational institution. We educated the general populace about all genres of music. I didn't mention Emmy Lou Harris and uh, Earl Scruggs. I didn't mention Weather Report or um, and on and on and jazz and blues and uh, bluegrass. So and this and this we're gonna we brought in one of the greatest folk singers of all time, Mr. Leonard Cohen played at Shabu two nights. It was such an honor to have him. And my brother brought him to the campus restaurant the next morning for breakfast and didn't tell me. I'll never forgive him for that. 
And we're going to do a little Leonard Cohen for you. This one is actually a newer song, 1984. I didn't learn it until the movie Shrek came out. This is a Shrek sad song. I have one song, one word. It's hallelujah. I heard there was a secret chord. David played it and pleased the Lord. You don't really care for music, do you? Well, it goes like this. The fourth, the fifth, the minor fall. The Bible King composing Hallelujah. Sing it with me. strong and you needed proof you saw her bathing on the roof her beauty and the moonlight overthrew you she tied you to a kitchen chair she broke your throat she cut your hair from your lips she drew a hallelujah hallelujah Again, I could stay here all day and play Shubu songs, but I want to expand out what what happened after Shubu a little bit. I um I was introduced to homelessness in Willimantic. <laughs> I didn't know it existed, and um, I was playing down the Baptist Church, and uh, a bunch of people in there. I was playing for free with my daughter Emma. She was like six or seven, and we were doing bluegrass gospel songs, and they were very appreciative of all the people there. Then I saw it was a, a, a day like that, almost like a, uh, a, a day like this, November cold, windy. 
At the end of the show, they were walking out across the street to under the bridge. When I looked at Reverend Fred, I went, Rev, where are these people going? He goes, they're homeless, Bruce. They live under the bridge. I couldn't sleep. I mean, I was sick. I, I just, I didn't know. Um, it was 30, 40 people in, in Willamette, homeless, cold at night. I went home to my warm, toasty house. And I started doing benefits for the, um, for we, and we op they opened the no-freeze shelter. And I did a benefit every year for them um, for, I don't know, 17, 18 years. And we would almost pay their rent every year in my band, um, my band, the, the dads, uh, dads After Dark. And then um, it, it also got me tuned in to the Covenant Soup Kitchen in Wayne. And in 2009, um, oh, oh, was a little, I'm going to back up a little before that. Before that, we spent about 11 years uh, doing a, uh, it was called Food for the Body and Soul Bluegrass Gospel Concert at my church, Congregational Church in Coventry. And we would fill a truckload, donated, the, the, the gates would donate the truck, and we'd fill it with food. And that led into us doing the bread box, which I'll get to in a minute. But right now, I want to do the Bluegrass Gospel that kind of touched part of my soul, I had like 15, 20 people from the area, all different kinds of musicians and singing with us. And if you didn't know, Peggy is actually a bona fide uh, bluegrass star. She's been on the stage with, with Bill Monroe and did a set with Vasher Clements. Was in a band years ago called Trevor Hollow. They toured all over. So all the songs I taught Peggy, she had no idea what they were, but she knows this because she's a bluegrass lady. I just want to say that I was so fortunate to play at all these places. I can't drive around without seeing 10 places I performed at, from houses to churches to granges and on and on and on. I've been so blessed to not have to, I could be in my own bed every night and play at all these beautiful, beautiful places. And I still have that gift that I'm, um, I'm busy I'm playing a lot. If you would look for me at brucejohnmusic.com or on my Facebook page, I'm Relentless how I post about where I am. And um, intentionally so, to see the work today. I can't believe how many of you came out. I'm so flattered and honored, and thank you very much. Thank you. So we're, um, come see my show. I have a, a, next Thursday, the 9th, at 7.40 in the morning, 
we're going to do this live on the Wayne Norman show. I hope we get a little more of a time slot so we can fit in the like two or three songs that we had to cut out today. This is a song I thought was necessary because it's a song of 1969. It kind of captures everything I've been talking about all day. And it's hard as you get old to not always say, well, those were the days, but <laughs> those were the days. And uh, although we're all here, we're all having a good life, hopefully, and understand a little bit more what life means. This is a song about nostalgia that was a number one hit in 1969. I wasn't very nostalgic then, I was 18. Damn, am I nostalgic now, huh? Once upon a time there was a tavern where we used to raise a glass or two. Remember how we laughed away the hour and dreamed of all the great things we would do. Those were the days, my friend. We thought they'd never end. We'd sing and dance forever and a day. We'd live the life we choose. We'd fight and never lose. Cause we were young and sure to have our way. La -la. starry notions on the way and if by chance I'd see you in the tavern I we'd smile at one another and we'd say those were the days my friend we thought they'd never end we'd sing and dance We choose ah, we fight and never lose Cause we were young and sure of our way Just tonight I stood before the tavern and nothing seemed the way it used to be. And in the glass I saw a strange reflection. Could that rock and roller in the mirror really be me? Those were the days, my friend. You thought they'd never end. We'd sing and dance. Thank you. I hope you got a little taste of what, I, what I've seen in my life here with music. 1935, the great, the great uh, <laughs> Lead Belly. Last Saturday night, I got married. Me and my wife, we settled down. Me and my wife are parted. I think I'll take a stroll downtown. Peggy, sing with me. I ring good night. I ring good night. Good night, I ring. Good night, I ring. See you in my dreams. Now, 
Sometimes I live up in the country, beautiful downtown Eagle, though. Sometimes I stay downtown, and sometimes I take a notion for to jump in the Willamantic River and drown. Oh, I ring good night. I ring good night. Good night. Some folks, they like their sugar. And some folks, they like their wine. You know who we are. But me and Peggy, we love our music. And we sing it all the time. No microphones. Thank you so, so much. Great job, Peggy Ann. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Come on, see me sometime. I'm everywhere.